Hello YouTube, this is the chef, the proprietor of Millennium Hobbies and the Gundam Kitchen, and I wanted to talk to you about a serious epidemic that has been going on through the Gundam community. If you're not sure if you have this serious infection, listen to the following statements and determine for yourself. Do you build kits straight off the directions and are satisfied with the results? Have you built more than five kits and haven't started panel lining or top coating? Do you complain about decals used for color separation but don't own a paintbrush? Do you spend your days looking at Instagram, Reddit, Tumblr, admiring others' work, but then sit down for your 10th kit and add no customization, only afraid that you'll never be able to do what others do online? If you have answered yes to any of these statements, then you are a basic ass builder. How are you going to complain about decals and you don't even own a paintbrush? You basic. Spending your time watching YouTube reviews and complaining about kits you don't even own, but you don't own a panel line and pen? You basic as fuck. Those are the symptoms, and the number one cause is you're afraid. You're afraid to step out of your comfort zone, afraid to push it. So let's talk about how we can fix that. Other causes are you're broke as fuck. You think you can't afford to do it. And you're al you also may be underinformed. You may think that what you see online is feats of the gods of modeling and that you can't perform the same. If you're underinformed, how does that happen in 2017? Let's take a trip down memory lane. My first high grade was back in 2000. I did a Bawu, panel lined it right off the bat. Next one was a 1100 high grade sand rock, custom painted it. How did I know to do that? Back in 2000, we barely had the internet. It took like 45 seconds just to load up a picture. You couldn't even watch a video more than two minutes. You had dial up. You guys don't even know about AOL, God. Dial up was horrible. Mm. If you were lucky, you had DSL. Oh, and we had these other things. I think they were called um, libraries, and they had these things called books. Yeah, but there were no Gumpla books, so that didn't really help either. But anyway. Somehow I knew to step it up back in 2000. How did I know that? Well, I just looked at the side of the box and I could see after I finished my work, it looked nothing like the side of that box. So I knew they were doing something else and I needed to figure it out. So first thing I did is like, what's different? They have panel lines. I need a panel line. When I got to that uh, sand rock, whew, those old wing kits, whoo, they were rough. So looked at the pictures again. Everything was painted on thing. I could tell just by the picture. It was painted. So I painted. My goal was to make my kit look as good as the box. And you have to understand, we're blessed to have Bandai who makes amazing snap fit kits that are out the box better than anything out there. But that doesn't mean they're perfect and they still need a little work. It's a hobby. It's modeling. It's not supposed to be just cut and dry. All of a sudden you got a figure. Like you just buy a pre-painted figure and maybe you attach two arms together and you'd be done. No, this is a hobby, so we gotta put some work in. Second cause, you're broke as fuck. Well, I think that's a cop out. To get a nice finish isn't that expensive. And B, all you gotta do is stop buying new kits and invest in some tools. And pens, or top coat, or paint, and then you'll get the finishes you want. You can go back and work on your old kits, because they probably need some love. And the number one and truest cause of your reluctance is that you're scared. You're scared to destroy a kit. You're scared to just tear it up. It'll look like garbage. Most things are reversible. So panel lines, you can get rid of those. Take whatever the thinner is. Clean them right back out if you mess up. Paint, throw it in some thinner. It'll clean it right on up. So most things, you got a chance to fix them. If you're scared because you don't think you're going to be able to do a good job, use this opportunity to get over your fears. This is a great opportunity to expand. Push yourself. My number one suggestion, if you just feel like you don't know what you're gonna do, how to do it, get a mentor. I'll do a whole video on that. Mentors are very important. And you don't have to go find you know, a great Gundam builder. Find a guy, maybe your grandfather, maybe your father. They might have built car models or military models. These guys are great resources. They know tons of tricks. Secondly, find a store like mine. 
You come in here, you socialize a little bit, you'll meet some people who are doing amazing work and they are so willing to give you help. And if it's not even a Gundam store, same thing works in a regular hobby store. Those military guys, those car guys, they know a lot. Use them. There's dudes who um, build railroad stuff. So they'll build like all the terrain and all the houses and stuff like that from scratch. Tons of knowledge. Seek them out. Also, some places offer classes. You know, you might have to pay a little bit to get a class, but it can be very rewarding. Take those opportunities. And of course, there's that thing, um, you guys have it now, it's called the internet. Use it. Tons of YouTube reviews, you know. I think it's always better to learn in person, but this will get you started if you don't have anything nearby you. All jokes aside, 90% of that stuff you're seeing on Reddit and Tumblr and Instagram, those are doctored pictures. A lot of those kids don't even look that good in person as they do on photograph. So don't just sit there and drool and be like, oh, I can never do it. You can actually do something, take a photograph, and have it look just as good as those guys, just based on lighting and all that kind of stuff with your photograph. So don't be intimidated by other people's work online. I mean, those guys that, you know, some of those competitions, obviously that stuff looks really good right up close because they're getting judged for it. But, again, why are you comparing yourself to masters, guys who've probably dedicated months into one project? Why, why look at it like that? Take it in baby steps. Now, like any commercial that discusses a disease and then the medication for it, we have to look at the side effects. Now, those side effects may seem pretty harsh, but remember, it could always be worse. You could be a 25-year-old building your 12th kit, just ripping parts off the screw with no tools. Is there a God? This is not to say that there aren't some good kits out there that just look great, straight built. You know, you have the Exeus and some of the real grades like the Sinanju are great looking kits. But remember, this is Gunpla, and Gunpla is freedom. Freedom to explore your creativity. So why would you want to build some ratchet basic if you don't get the YouTube reference to this video, check out College Humor skit, Basic Bitch. And if you're like, Chef, does that make you a basic ass YouTuber for copying that old skit? Then yeah, I guess I am a basic bitch. But one day I'm gonna be a badass bitch. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't leave you guys hanging like that after I ripped on you for that long. Let's learn something. Let's start with panel lines. I'm gonna give you six different variations to do the same thing so you can find one that fits you. And I'm gonna show you how to clean it up if you mess up or you just don't wanna see it anymore. All right, let's start with a mechanical pencil. And you don't even have to find the thinnest one. I'm gonna show you how to hook it up too if you don't have a real thin one. What I don't like about the mechanical pencil is the kind of, that graphite is a little bit of a uh, shine to it. Mine wasn't sharp enough, so I hit it on the sandpaper. Got a nice little edge to it, now I can fit inside the panel line. The great thing about this, super easy cleanup, just turn it around, you got the eraser right there. We probably already have one in the house. Next up, Micron Pen. Started with this one because they're a lot easier to find than uh, Gundam markers. You can find these at pretty much any craft store. This is the point zero zero five. Super thin. Thinner than the Gundam marker. They come in a couple different colors, but I'm not sure if they come in any other colors at the point oh oh five. You get a really dark line. What I don't like about the marker, it stays wet for a very long time, so you have a chance to smudge it by accident. On to the Gundam marker. Feel bad because I should have got a fresh one. This one's kind of dying, so it takes me a couple strokes to get a halfway decent line. But the great thing about the Gundam marker is designed for the plastic. Works every time unless your kit's like super old and dusty. And the cleanup's super easy. Look at that. Just using my finger. 
I ain't got time for Q-tips. All right, pore type markers. These came out about two years ago. Really great solution. Kind of gives you the ability of a wash, but in a pen form. Look at this. And you get a pretty little line. By the way, a lot of guys will use uh, brown markers for reds and sometimes yellows. Try the black here, and the spot that wasn't even really a panel line was too wide, so it's kind of yucky, but just want to show you the black too. Again, clean up with the thumb. Keep it moving. Simplicity. All right, so we got a bunch of lines down. Let's move on to the real touch pens. Got it, gray, brown, tons of colors in these. They even come in sets. Two, two sides of these, you have a big felt tip and then a little sharper one. These are really better for uh, doing fades and spots that aren't actually panel lines, but they also work for panel lines, as you'll see. It's gonna be a lot wider than the other markers, but you can wipe away the excess with ease. Now check this out for cleanup. Real Touch also comes in a, sometimes they call it a blue marker, sometimes they call it an eraser marker. Take out the excess with that. Some kind of magic sucks up. You can actually see that the tip has already uh, got some stuff on it, but look at that. It's cleaning that line up right away. All right, so say we want to clean up everything. 90 proof alcohol. Got this from Walmart. You can get it anywhere, drug stores. Just make sure you get a 90% above rubbing alcohol. Q-tip. That's a little fancy one. Got a nice little sharp angle to it. You don't need those fancy ones though. Everything's gonna come up nice and easy except for that micron. That stuff is uh, a little harder to get up. It takes a little elbow grease, but it still comes up. See, switch to the bigger key tip to really move the stuff. Micron's giving me trouble. That is a good thing about the Micron though. Since it's a little, it's not the same kind of formula as a Gundam marker, it sticks a lot longer, and I think that'll probably be good for your top coats because the Gundam marker does tend to run a little bit if you put your top coat on too heavy. But you can see easily removed about a third of those panel lines. All right, on to the washes, and I'm a big fan of washes. So this is Tamaya's panel accent we just got in the U.S. Uh, about six months ago. Watch how easy that. Loop, dab will do you. Again, just wipe it off real quick. One bad thing about that, I think it might be an enamel base or lacquer base, and it can eat up PC parts. So be careful where you put it on. All right, here's another store bought wash. This is a. Uh, either an enamel or oil base. I think it's enamel actually. Shake it up real good. Get all the good gunk on the bottom moving around. And again, this is gonna work just as easy as Tamaya's. Now I've had a little problem with Tamaya on painted kits where it seeped into my um, paint. I'm not sure if I have to top coat it or what, but I've seen other guys use it with ease, but maybe they're using um, lacquer paints or something like that. You always want to use opposite wash to the kind of paint you're using. So I really like oil washes. These are actually oil washes I've made myself. That's an oil paint, um, Starship Filth, what a great name. 
and I use a MIG uh, thinner back there to thin it out. It's probably about 10% paint to, you know, 90 That little uh, jar will last me forever. Or actually not the jar, the tube will last me forever. So you see that works just as well. And then I went on Amazon and picked me up a whole set of these uh, cheap oil paints just to see. You see that's black, but it has a bluish tint. But, you know, a lot of blacks are made of blues or browns or grays. So it's hardly true black, but it does the job. And this way I can make oil washes in tons of colors. And it works just as well as the other ones. If you paid attention in the very beginning when I was showing you the stuff we were set up with, there was a fluorescent green one. That was a set of enamel fluorescents I bought to make washes of. So now I can do like energy lines and stuff like that. Works really good for uh, miniatures too. Time for cleanup. Got a oil paint thinner. This big one is the odorless one. So a little bit messy, but cleans up well. Q-tips to work again. So stuff's coming up pretty easy. The great thing about oils too is that uh, they don't dry for 24 to 36 hours. So you got a long time to work them. Um, the only thing that was giving me trouble there was the tamaya, was tamayas, because it's not oil based. All right, next is one of my favorite tricks. It's called a uh, gunk wash. So advantages, you can just slap this stuff on and wipe it right off. Disadvantage, it's going to tint your uh, piece. So if you're trying to go for the true colors, you probably don't want to do that. But if you don't mind doing a little tint to it, um, what's called a filter a lot of times, it'll give it a nice little darker shade. And now you got a bunch of paints done all at once. This also works great for battle damage. Scratch it up a little bit and it'll get in all the crevices. And there you go. Takes seconds. You get real, you know, ain't no retentive on your cleanup job there and have it real sharp. And then here we go. Let's clean it off. Back to the beginning. So I just want to make sure you guys feel comfortable that, you know, if you do something and you don't like the results, you should be able to clean it up, especially if it's on bare plastic. It's not too hard to clean up at all. Now, if you paint something, you got to be real careful that you're matching whatever you're using to do your panel lines with the paint. For example, none of those Bandai, I'm sorry, none of the markers are going to work on a painted kit. Micron, I doubt will work either. You want to do the washes, so that's why I really recommend that you start doing washes early so you already have that mastered. And they're just as cheap and accessible, probably even more accessible because you can go to an art store and grab them if you don't you know, have uh, oil paints at your hobby store or a hobby store near you, you can always go to the art store. And just one more test, I forgot to show you that uh, the white eraser on your uh, mechanical pencil, or if you buy a white eraser, will actually pull up Gundam markers too. So, not the best test here because I didn't have time to set in, but it just right off. So, from what I can tell is that the Gundam markers just sit on the surface. They don't stain or anything like that. So, the friction from the eraser just pulls it right off. Here I'm going in some of the panel lines that I left from before. It's pulling it right out of the panel lines. It's actually able to squeeze in there. And lastly, I just wanted to show you, if all else fails, you can do a little sanding and take it, take that top layer off. 
and then just buff it back to a nice shine. All right, I hope you guys got something out of this. And it's way easier than you think. And that's the goddamn truth.